Hello guys and welcome once again to Jones's vlog. So the soap opera that is Leeds United um, seems to be continuing. Um, I've always said that as Leeds United fans, we shouldn't ever be sort of surprised by by what happens, you know, at the club. I mean, we've kind of been there, done that, wore the t-shirt, and and seen anything that's that's possible. I mean, I can say that even in just the you know 17 years that I've been supporting them. I mean, my dad's. Over 50 years he's been supporting them, so I mean, he's seen a hell of a lot more than me, and I saw, you know, a lot of you out there have seen a lot more than me as well. But even we have to say, over the past few days, it's got even weirder. Um, <laughs> I'll get on to that in a minute. So I'll start off with uh, with the match on the, on Saturday. I didn't do a video after that just because I didn't really see, see the point. Because once again, I wasn't at the game, so I couldn't go into detail about that. I was only going to say very similar things to what I'd said in the past few past few vlogs anyway um, so th there wasn't really much need and much point for me to uh, to do a vlog that day um, but you know uh, more disappointment really uh, you know losing losing at home to to uh, Doncaster who has such a poor poor away record it, it just summed everything up you know that is going on at the club at the moment uh, once again a uh, absolutely atrocious first half followed by a second half of the match league trying to play play some decent stuff and get back into the game which by all accounts you know it was a better second half but it counts for nothing at the end of the day if you have such a poor first half and you let your opposition get two goals ahead I mean we might as well just start giving opposition you know a two goal head start every game because we might actually start playing from the yeah, from the off then but so yeah you know more disappointment and I mean that's what five defeats in six in six games now uh, 18 goals conceded I think um, line in 15th minus 6 goal difference um, and it's just that you know a way to stop that I mean even the 2-1 the victory against Millwall which was um, a labour performance again by, by all accounts and wasn't a great performance you know that clearly wasn't enough to, to stop this rot that we've been in so you know you look towards tomorrow night and it can't be one of those games anymore where you say oh that's a game we should be winning we don't deserve to be, you know, to be able to say that anymore with with how this season's going. You know, we we don't have the right to say, oh, that should be a game we should be winning. It's just not the case anymore, I'm afraid, is it? Um, so obviously that disappointment there. Then Saturday night things started getting strange. Um, <laughs> there was uh, a rumor circulating on Twitter that this a uh, uh, Leeds fan, I believe he, he may be American or Canadian or something, judging by his accent, but I'm not sure. But he runs like a, an amateur radio station by the sounds of it. Um, and he'd somehow managed to get Ken Bates' number and uh, and rang him up uh, there and then and, and started asking him questions. And basically slagging him off as well, calling him a scumbag, which was quite hilarious. Um, and Ken Bates came out saying how, um, uh, you know, basically having a go at GFH. He had to go at David Hague. He called him fucking ignorant, I think. Um... And just doing the usual Ken Bates stuff, really, saying how you know the club's in trouble and everything, and he doesn't seem to be surprised, and talking about you know trying to defend himself as well. So uh, I didn't listen to the the whole of that um, interview, uh, but yeah, that's when things started to get weird. Then Sunday came along. Um, well, it was quite late last night actually, and again there was um, a, a rumor circulating that he'd done it with Cellino this time um, and he'd rung Massimo, <laughs> Massimo Cellino up and at first I didn't believe it, I just didn't think that he'd, he'd managed to do it again or you know the thing that was being played out was some kind of hoax or something um, but after sort of being assured by a few people um, you know I gave it a listen and it's 22 minutes of just pure gold I mean I've never heard anything like it in my life um, it was a bit hard to understand all of it, obviously, with uh, with with his accent, and it seemed like quite a poor line as well. So it's a bit difficult to hear some bits, but um, I mean, within the first couple of minutes, he'd, he'd called Haig uh, a fucking rich boy. Um, I did call him like a little parasite or something, or a little evil. Uh, he was like the devil or something, like proper ripping into David Haig um, and sort of having a, an overall go at GFH. Um, he said that we had a shite team and that it's the, the worst football team he's, he's ever seen in his life. Um, I st obviously started having to go at, at McDermott saying that he um, 
he needs to concentrate. What was it? Something. It's all right talking on the uh, talking on the TV, but do your fucking job or something. And saying he's a better, you know, he's, he's a coach, but he's not a very good manager. And basically hinted that you know, if if the appeal that was today was to have been successful, then he pretty much said that you know McDermott was probably going to go. Um. So yeah, I mean, he just came out full throttle and gave honest answers. I say gave honest answers, there weren't really that many questions asked from the guy doing it because Cellino just went off on a massive rant on his own, he didn't need much prompting. Uh, it was really fantastic stuff. And um, what else was he saying? Oh, saying about, I mean obviously there's, we don't know if what he's saying is true, but according to him, Noel Hunt is meant to be on £25,000 a week and Luke Murphy is meant to be on £22,000 a week, which if it is true, is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I mean, it works out that Hunt would have earned something like £950,000 for doing absolutely fuck all so far. Um, and I mean, Murphy is nowhere near worth that amount of money. Um, and to be fair, I mean, he said, you know, a team performing this badly at this, you know, this area in the league should, shouldn't be earning more than about five five or, or ten grand which I agree with really um, so laid into them uh, said that apparently McCormack had asked for a transfer on deadline day and that he'd stopped him and he, he just went all full out att attack on everyone but I mean I've made my views clear on Cellino um, on here in the past and you know I'd started to move towards the fact of you know still didn't particularly want him but it was more a case of needed him but um, he managed to sort of turn me around a little bit last night with some of the things he was saying. I think it was just good to hear, well, if it is the truth, you know, someone just trying to be honest and and saying how it is at the club and saying what's happening. I mean, he admitted that he's spent about £10 million, uh, on the club, whereas GFH haven't put in a, a, a penny, which I think we kind of knew that before anyway. And, you know, it just kind of shows what a mess the club is. And I mean, you know, people can say what they like about about um, Chilino and about the interview and everything, but for me, you know, it's probably the most honest um, and passionate kind of interview uh, or talk that we've heard from someone sort of behind the scenes at the club since, well, I can't remember when. Uh, you know, certainly didn't have anything like that from Bates or GFH or anyone. So just to hear someone talking for once from the club, you know, that isn't McDermott or McCormack, you know, it's the first person to sort of come out and, and tell things how, how they are for quite a while. So, so yeah, it sort of started, you know, a little bit more of a, a fan of it, just to hear his passion as well. Uh, you know, it, it talks a good game. And the, the guy doing the interview said, you know, how much money, if you were to get the club, you know, how much money would you, would you put in? And it gave a great answer, and it was the fact of, he said, you know, it's not about having the most money and just throwing money at a club and thinking that it'll be all right you know it's about spending it the right way um, and on the right things and you know that is what you want to hear um, you know from a prospective owner or someone that's going to be in charge of your club you know you don't want someone doing silly spending because we know where that's got us before so um, so yeah but then there's the flip side you know say he, is, he was to get the club I do get the feeling that that interview is going to come back to haunt him somehow at some point. Um, I mean, obviously, I don't know whether the players will have heard it or seen any of the quotes from it, but I can't imagine, you know, they'll particularly want to play for him. Um, and it's not going to do much for, for morale in the squad. So, you know, you have to look at the flip side of things. Um, you know, he was probably silly in the first place to have... So, I mean, by all account, he didn't seem to know that it was being recorded. You know, the guy didn't make it clear that it was being recorded for a radio station thing. So, I mean, that was kind of bad from the start, really. He shouldn't be doing that. Um, but, you know, for Chilino to kind of say that much information to someone he didn't know was, you know, a little bit silly of him, really. But, um, in a way, I'm kind of glad because, you know, you get to hear some things that maybe we didn't want to hear, but um, I think we needed to hear. So, it's... Um, it's one of those things where I mean I do get the feeling that if he if he is to get um, get the club, then we can say goodbye to McDermott and Haig and and <laughs> everyone else involved 
um, sort of straight away. I imagine, you know, we might only see a couple of players survive a massive cull in the summer. Um, and another good thing he was saying about bringing in English players and not just all foreigners. He did say about you know some internationals, but he says you know you need good sort of young English players in in the squad, which again is a kind of um, good thing to hear from a you know prospective owner. Uh, and something I wasn't expecting to hear from him really. Um, I think quite a lot of people were surprised by some of the stuff he was saying and some of the sensible things he was saying um, amongst all the uh, all the effing and cheffing. So, so that was last night, and then obviously today it was uh, it was the appeal. So I think the majority of Leeds fans have spent all day uh, refreshing Twitter and and uh, all relevant news pages. And um, of course, then they came out saying that it's all been sort of concluded, but the judge was reserving his judgment or something. Um, so God knows when we're going to hear that. Apparently, it's common for stuff like that to happen because there's like reports and stuff to to write up. So it could be tomorrow, it could be next week. So that's another waiting game, which again we used to as as Leeds United fans. I mean, we're just constantly waiting for news, aren't we? So so that leads leads us to here. So. Another crazy weekend in the uh, in the Leeds United soap opera, and um, <laughs> what can you say really? It's uh, it's just all all madness, all mental. So um, so yeah, Charlton tomorrow night. Uh, still not sure if I'm going or not. It may be a very last minute decision to go, um, but I'm uh, yeah I'm not too sure. And like I say, there's. There's no point even trying to make a prediction for the match or saying how it'll go because it really could just go either way. If we don't get out the blocks, then Charlton could go on and win three three nil or something. Um, and it, that's I, I'm getting to the point where I am speechless, and it's just you know you you go through through so much, and you just get to a point where I mean on on Saturday when I was listening to uh, to to the match and seeing the results going through and everything and the and the goals. I was just kind of laughing to myself, really, because that's all you can do at this point now. I mean, it. Yes, it hurts and everything, and it's it's painful to see your club go through this. But it's, you know, if you didn't laugh, you'd cry at it all, really. So, it's um, it's all pretty pathetic. So, so that's that, guys. Anyway, so the next time you'll hear from me. Well, it depends, really. Um, if anything else is sort of comes out. This week, you know, if if tomorrow's match is a spectacular one, and we happen to hey, you know, find out um, the result of the Chilino appeal this week, then obviously I'll do a, a video. Then, if not, then it will probably be um, the away days video that I'm doing for the Wigan game. That will probably go up on Sunday. So, um, so that's probably the next time you'll hear from me. So, let me know your comments, guys. Um, first of all, on the match from Saturday, those of you that were there, um, you know, what was it like to actually be there? Was it as bad as it sounded in the first half? What did you think of the second half? Um, you know, the likes of Michael Tong, A.D. White came back into the fold and seemed to do all right. Would you like to see them continue in the team? Uh, let me know about the, the Ken Bates interview and the Chilino one from last night and um, and on the appeal today. So, uh, just want to finish, um, finish this video um, on this note. I'm not sure how many of you um, sort of watch my gaming videos or whatever, but... Um, Last night I did a, a live stream on Twitch, and it was really successful. Uh, really, really enjoyed it. Um, so I just want to say thank you again to those that, that did join me um, last night. You know, I had a really, really great time. Uh, had a lot of fun, a uh, lot of interaction between people. You know, people that have never met or chatted before were chatting amongst themselves in the chat, which for me is what live streaming and sort of Twitch is for. You know, getting other people together uh, and having one big discussion like that. So it was a lot of fun. Um, so those of you that are interested, hopefully it's going to be a, um, a more permanent thing. So I'm hopefully going to be streaming again on uh, Sunday, again roughly the same time, about 8 p.m. But uh, I will be letting people know on relevant social media, on my Twitter, or again here on uh, here on YouTube. So yeah, that's it from me, guys. So let me know your thoughts on uh, on things I've touched upon here. Um, and yeah, thank you for watching as always guys, and I will uh, see you all very soon. And those of you that are going to Charlton tomorrow night, try and enjoy it. See you later.